welcome to Idea Gen TV. Today, I'm thrilled to have with us Cheryl Klein, executive coach, CEO, and founder of the Zone Lab. Cheryl, welcome. Thanks so much, George. It's nice to see you again and really glad to be here. You know, Cheryl, always great to see you, especially since you're always moving forward to changing the world. I'd love to lead right into this interview by asking you to kindly explain, to highlight for our global audience exactly what it is that you're doing. Yeah, what is what is Zone Lab doing? What is your executive coaching? What's the purpose? What are you doing? Well, that is a fantastic question. I'll try and keep it somewhat uh, somewhat brief. But you know, for the better part of two decades, my background is really in applied sports psychology, and that really started off working with world-class athletes and Olympians, mainly because as a young person, I was told I was not good enough to be to remain at this you know small private school in San Francisco. I eventually started wondering who gets to decide who's good enough, and eventually I started um, working and studying and researching some of the best athletes in the world because I wanted to understand with Olympians who got to decide if they were good enough to be in the Olympics, who decided if they won the Olympics. And what I learned was is that they chose themselves. And about eight years ago, made the pivot to then working with mental toughness and high performance for women in the workplace, just because I think we're at a time in, in history now more than ever that women's voices need to be heard, valued, respected, even more. And so I'm really in the business of going shoulder to shoulder. And I've been honored to work with some of the most prolific female leaders here in San Francisco, where I am in Silicon Valley and across the country to help them really access the absolute highest version of themselves so they can help shift cultures and companies and actually the world for the greater good. You know, Cheryl, that's just so incredibly inspiring. And I can't really think of anyone better than you to be helping so many women and leaders uh, across Silicon Valley, across the Bay Area, across the planet, really, helping to change the world. And you have uh, such an incredible gift uh, that you're sharing, and that is the gift of leadership. And so I'd like to ask you for our global audience what has been your journey? What does it look like? And how did you even begin to think about becoming a leadership coach? Well, I'll just, you know, elaborate a little bit. I thought that my story was really about my dad who, you know, I got asked to leave this school despite getting the grades and doing the things. And just because it was ultra, ultra competitive. And he told me when we left uh, that meeting, uh, when I was about 10, actually, uh, that, you know, he said, if you put your mind to it, you can do anything. And for the longest time, I thought my story was about my dad. He definitely inspires, uh, inspired me. But my story was really about my mom because my mom had a, uh, a dream to save three species of owls. And I remember growing up with, you know, my dad saying, who are you to save a species of anything? And she went in, she did not have a college education, but she was really passionate. Uh, about this. And she actually passed away quite young at the age of 69. And within three months, those three species of owls went extinct. And so I really believe in my heart that female leaders and, and male leaders as well, we all have something very special placed within us um, that's very unique to us, but possibly just inaccessible. And my coaching is really my coaching, my writing, my speaking, you know, as we just talked about before, we're going to be releasing an enterprise version of a digital curriculum. It's really focused on women. And the reason being is that not that women are better leaders, just different leaders. And there's a different level of conscious capitalism, a different level of intuitiveness, and a different level of ability to lead with confidence, lead effectively, lead profitably, but also to lead with love. And I think that that's more important now more than ever. And so, Cheryl, you know, you've interviewed, you've worked with, you've helped mentor and coach so many leaders, so many female leaders. And what have been some of the key traits? What are those key traits that you've seen 
time and time again that make for a very successful leader? Uh, well, I mean, oh, that, that question twofold. One is that these leaders care very deeply about their people. They are very aware of the bottom line, uh, but they care very deeply about their people. One thing that I have noticed also is that they're already confident. They're they're already amazing leaders. They've you know been in business for you know in their career for 20, 25 years. But something that's incredibly challenging that I have noticed consistently is, is sometimes they're not being heard, valued, respected enough by their leadership and by their board. And so that's why, you know, my business really taken a little bit of a 90 degree turn and that uh, I've been studying the last two to three years with in FBI hostage negotiations so I can make sure that they are very prepared and that they are being heard, valued, respected even more and that they can lead their leaders and lead their board to do the right thing. A certain level of mental toughness really to succeed in business or anything that's challenging, right? You need to develop that, that level of mental toughness where you stay focused, where you don't get thrown off or taken off the mark that you're seeking to achieve. And so, how do you develop, how do you even begin to develop that mental toughness? Well, that's an interesting question because a lot of times people will assume that uh, maybe other people are mentally tough or sometimes this gets tied into confidence as well. But it's, there's tools, there's a proven process that, uh, you know, we, it's a little bit beyond the scope of our conversation today, but anyone who wants more details, I'm glad to share, but there's just a proven process that it really takes in consideration how to help individuals to be emotionally agile. It also has to do with monitoring what is going on in your mind, because whenever you're in any type of crucial conversation or negotiation, which most things are negotiations these days, whatever you're thinking in your mind comes out your mouth. And so in other words, it comes out in terms of your tone, your gestures, the cadence of your words. So, uh, so mental toughness is something that is learned, that people can follow a proven process to create it, but they also have to have experiences of successes. They have to know how to, I like to say, uh, and I love the word that you have the name of your magazine, catalyze. They need to know how to catalyze, quote unquote, failures and learn from them and really build a mental toughness muscle based on experiences and a proven process. And so as we look at all of these processes and everything that goes on within the coaching realm, what is a particularly meaningful moment that you have encountered that's been that, this is why I do what I do, that you've experienced as a performance coach well, I'm really glad that you asked that question. Um, I could not have paid you to ask a better question. <laughs> so I'm glad that came up. I would say very recently, I got a note from a client who was in a very, very high level GMT meeting. And it's a very important meeting because during the time we're in, you know, some different economic times now and some disruptive times and she just really hit it out of the park at a global GMT meeting. And she just emailed me and said, thank you. Because, you know, a lot of the women that the female leaders that I work with, I also work, you know, I have the honor of working with their teams as well. But a lot of the leaders, they're two to six years from an exit. They're thinking about what's next. They're thinking about their legacy plan. How do I want to be remembered? And in order to gain buy-in, to have influence, to create the legacy that they're truly capable of, they're going to need buy-in from their leadership. And so it was really a pivotal moment hearing from her that she really hit it out of the park, the GMT meeting. And she is really shifting cultures and shifting that company for the greater good going to the future, even when she's not there any longer. And then how do you balance success and challenges? How, how do these two sort of diametrically opposing um, 
realms. How do you, how do you balance those two things? Uh, you mean success and ch- uh, for myself or for my clients you, for or your coaching? Yeah, for the coaching. So how do you how do you determine success? How do you when do you know that? Bang! I've succeeded here with this person with the executive coaching. Oh well, you know, there's a lot of things that we do. We measure. And it's really based on what the clients are trying to achieve because I look at it as their success is my success if they're hitting their milestones. So it's not really necessarily about my success, but it's, it's really about understanding if their voices are being heard and if they are clear on what's next, if they're clear on their legacy plan, and if they're making clear and consistent progress towards that. And the way I function with, you know, the way I communicate with them and as well as how I conduct myself in my business, it's, it's really being in touch every single day. What is, what's possible? What's the highest version of myself for this leader? What in, you know, I don't work from smart goals. In my opinion, smart goals are stupid. We all work from big, audacious, crazy goals. So if, for example, if we have someone who's two to six years from an exit, it's not, well, what do you want to happen? It's like, if you had a magic wand, what would happen? Of course, it needs to be remotely possible. So the short answer to your question is, is that, you know, we dream big over here at the Zone Lab, and then we work backwards from there. Dream big. I love that. You know, Idea Gen's all about not only dreaming big, but achieving those goals, right? And in this case, the 17 global goals of the United Nations, as we look back to 2015, Cheryl, now you've, you know, you've prompted me to talk about the global goals because I think that's near and dear, I think, to both of us, right? So 2015. I'm a little partial to number five, but. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, but back in 2015, you know, all 193 member states, when they came together and raised their hand and said, yes, I agree, including the United States of America, on these 17 global goals, who would have thought, who would have thought that the planet would have gone through what we've been through, which is a global pandemic and on and on. And yet there's been a certain level of resiliency. There's been a certain level of transparency with respect to where the issues are across the planet. And therefore your work as an executive coach takes on an even higher level of importance because dreaming big becomes perhaps more difficult when faced with the headwinds of things like a global pandemic. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, I would say 100%. And I I really believe that dreams need to be about three steps ahead of reality. Um, And it's just important to proceed as if success is inevitable. You know, it's the same thing with with all of your sustainable development goals. Let's let's assume that we've met these goals. Let's assume it's 2030. These goals have happened, and then reverse engineer it back to today. And it and and also it's not just for us. You know, with I have a lot of conversations with <clears throat> excuse me with female leaders. You know, world class performers. If you if you know or you worked with let's say Olympians. They do not dedicate their entire life to something just for them to get a gold medal or to get notoriety. They are performing outside of themselves. And so for anyone watching or if they're come apart, um, come upon a rough patch or, or we're striving towards something that just seems somewhat impossible, it's really important to connect with not just what is your why? Because, you know, so much respect for Simon Sinek and all of his important work with that book. But it's also who's your who? Like, who are you fighting for? You know, I have, you know, we talked about before our sister company over at Girl Up Initiative Uganda. I have those six girls that were supporting for the next six years through their education. I mean, they're posted up in my office, you know. And so there's days, even if we're doing things that we love and we're seeing amazing progress, you know, not every day is it is a cakewalk as I would imagine that you could relate to. And so knowing uh, who our who is and who we're fighting for can really help fuel our efforts and keep us consistent. I love it. The who and the why. We've heard Simon talk about the why, but you don't hear a lot about the who. (laughs) So 
you know, it's elementary, I guess. And some people make the assumption that maybe you understand who the who is, but it's, it's important to your point, Cheryl, to focus in on that, right? To understand the why, but also understand the who. I think that's just incredible perspective. Um, I'd like to shift a bit to talk about the actual coaching and performance coaching. What role do you believe that visualization, for example, and imagery play in successfully achieving the end results of performance coaching? How do you get there? And how do you incorporate these techniques into your coaching with clients? Well, first of all, it's it's everything. And for anybody listening, including you, George, whether you realize it or not, you practice visualization every day. Uh, if we don't understand how visualization works, then uh, it can be to our detriment, meaning that we may have a propensity to uh, to catastrophize about something or worry about something or something that happened in the past or something that could happen in the future. And we replay that over and over and over in our mind. And so basically what we think and we feel impacts how we act and our actions impact our future. And so we need to choose those thoughts wisely and we need to choose how we visualize wisely. And so if we catastrophize or we see something is too difficult or we're frustrated, um, then we replay that over and over and that becomes our reality. And that becomes, makes, makes our path forward very difficult. And so there again, there's just a proven process to kind of back up a little bit and understand really how does visualization work? And in answer to your question, it's best to think of it as a little bit of a movie. In my first book, there's something called a visual loop. There's really a beginning, middle, and an end similar to a movie. And so if you're coming upon something or something's coming up, it's very important to you. Let's say a crucial conversation. You want to think about the beginning, you know, when you enter into the conversation, the middle of the conversation, and then how do you want to exit the conversation? Start thinking consistently about how you want things to turn out and keep it very simple. And so visualization is everything. And everyone, now that you're more aware of it, that's the first step. And then the second step is really to understand a process so you can visualize your success and then step into the role, whether it's short term or long term. If it's a long term vision, it's really important to start acting and being that person and step into that version today of the person that you want to be in the future because you will show up 100 percent differently. So, again, it's a little bit beyond the scope to talk about all the details you know, but it, it suffices to say a good place to start if it's something in the short term to think about the beginning, middle and end of something. How do you want it to turn out and plan it meticulously and rehearse it rather than catastrophizing and rehearsing how you don't want it to turn out? And if it's something further off in the future, you know, vision drives decision. So thinking about what is your vision and committing to that and asking yourself, how can I step into that vision today and become my future self today so we can start realizing it, connecting with the people, gaining buy-in from others so we can you know, head down that path of turning it into a reality. Cheryl, I, I, I've got to tell you, what you're doing is so incredibly inspiring. And your steps, the process, your vision and imagery. I mean, such a powerful, one of the most powerful interviews we've ever hosted here on Idea Gen TV. In addition to our previous interview quite a while back now, I think that you're changing the world. We're honored to be working with you and highlighting your work. And I want to commend you for all that you're doing to help change the world. Thanks so much, George. Right back at you. I'd like to ask you a final question, Cheryl. How, probably the most important question, how can folks find out more about the absolutely not important 
but essential work that you're doing. How, how do they find out that information? How do they reach out to you? How do they find out more about what you're doing? Well, thanks for asking. Well, two ways. Uh, one is I'm going to be providing a resource that should be helpful for emerging leaders or even for senior level executives who are trying to gain buy-in with their CEOs, with their board, what have you. It's called the Confident Meeting Formula. That will There will be a URL included for that. Otherwise, you can uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. My handle is at Cheryl Klein MA. And also, you could also have a look at my website, which is CherylKlein.com. Cheryl Klein, executive coach, CEO and founder at The Zone Lab. Thank you so very much for all you're doing. You are my friend, leadership defined. Wow. Thanks, George. It's been such an honor to spend time with you again. And I look forward to uh, what the future holds. Thank you.